Air masses. Regions of air. In this video, scientists will be able to comprehend air masses by taking notes. Let's start with a phenomenon. Maybe you've wondered, if water vapor is always rising and condensing, why doesn't it rain every day? And the answer has to do with the fact that not all air is the same. In fact, air is normally part of an air mass. Air masses are huge bodies of air that have the same temperature, humidity, and air pressure. And these air masses can spread over thousands of miles. You'll notice in the diagram on the right that there's two air masses. Those air masses, or bodies of air, can be the size of countries, and the air within that mass will have the same temperature, humidity, and air pressure. Speaking of humidity, humidity is a measure of how much water vapor is in air. Humid air, or moist air, has lots of water vapor. In the diagram on the right, think about a tropical rainforest. In the circle, you can see that there's lots of water vapor in that air. That's going to be very humid or very moist air. Other types of air will be very dry, which means it has very little water vapor. Again, you might want to think about a desert. The air above a desert will have very little water vapor. That air is going to be extremely dry. When it comes to naming air masses, we look at two things, the humidity and the temperature of the air. Air masses get their names based on two things, the first being humidity. Maritime air masses, which you will see represented with a lowercase m, maritime air masses form over oceans and carry lots of water vapor. And that makes sense. As water evaporates, the air over the ocean will start to fill up with lots of water vapor. Continental air, on the other hand, represented with a lowercase c, forms over the land and will have very little water vapor. Again, that makes sense. Since the land doesn't have a lot of water, not very much water vapor will be going into the air. We also look at temperature. Tropical air masses, with a capital T, are warm and form in the tropics, whereas polar air masses, with a capital P, are cold and form north or south of 50 degrees latitude which means that polar air forms near the Arctic and Antarctic, and that air obviously is going to be cold. Now, naming an air mass is really just looking at the humidity and temperature options that we have. So looking at our data table, air can be tropical, which means warm. It can also be polar or cold. Air can be continental, which is dry, or maritime, which is moist. Now taking a word from the temperature section and from the humidity section, we can get the names of the four air masses. So if I take continental and tropical in this first box, one type of air mass is continental tropical. On a map, you'll see it represented by lowercase c, capital T. Now, continental tropical gets the properties of these two words. Continental means dry, and tropical means warm. So, continental tropical air is air that is dry and warm. Moving across, I'm going to keep continental, but I'm going to add polar. Some air can be continental polar, represented with lowercase c, uppercase p. This air will be dry for continental and cold for polar. 
Next, let's take tropical and maritime. Maritime tropical air, or lowercase m, capital T, is moist, warm air. Now I'm thinking about the air in Maryland during the summer. Maybe you've walked outside and it is hot and muggy. Maybe you've heard your parents say that word, muggy. That just means moist or lots of water vapor. The final combination is then maritime and polar. Maritime polar air is both moist and cold. Moist from maritime, cold from polar. On a map, you'll see it represented by lowercase m, capital P. Using these four different definitions, we can name just about any air mass on Earth. And understanding these air masses will be really important when we go to predict weather. Which brings us to our key points. First is that the air surrounding the Earth tends to be part of an air mass. An air mass is a huge body of air. Those air masses on Earth all have different humidity and temperature. And based on the humidity and temperature is how air masses get their names. 